Hello and welcome to the introduction on how to use the slide navigation and interactive features in Storyline 360. At the top of the slide, you can see the module number, lesson number, and lesson name, indicating the current lesson. The player bar is located at the bottom of the screen. It includes the play pause button on the left, the seek bar that allows you to control the slide timeline by dragging it, and the replay button to restart the slide. You can adjust the volume by clicking on the speaker icon. To enable closed captions, simply press the CC button. You can also adjust the playback speed by clicking this button here. Additionally, there is a full-size screen option available by clicking the screen icon on the right-hand side. If you want to skip slides, there are two options available. The first option is to use the next or previous buttons located at the bottom right corner of the slide. You can navigate through the slides one by one using these buttons. The second option is to open the menu bar by clicking the highlighted icon at the top left corner. In the menu, you will find a list of slide sections. Note that the current slide will be highlighted whilst the slides you have already viewed are marked with ticks. By opening the menu bar, you can jump to any slide you wish to visit in this lesson. However, it is possible that some lessons may have this feature restricted until you have viewed the slides in the prescribed order. If you click on the transcript tab on the right side of the menu, you will have access to the transcript. To search for specific slides in the lesson, click on the magnifying glass icon and enter the keyword to initiate the search. If there are resources available for the lesson, you can easily access them by clicking the resources button at the top right corner. When a hand cursor appears on a slide, you can click it to jump to the corresponding timestamps. This feature allows you to quickly navigate to the mentioned points or highlighted sections on the timeline. If you would like to learn more about EIT's world leading education and training courses, click on the screen or visit us at our website. We look forward to supporting your professional development journey. From all of us at the Egler Institute of Technology, we wish you all the best for your studies. Welcome to the Hybrid Electric Drive module. I'm Mark Egler and I'll be your instructor for this session. Hybrid electric drive technology has been rapidly advancing over the last decade. It now appears that this technology, which has achieved considerable success in the commercial sector, may almost be ready to start its final transition into the military vehicle technology domain. This course is therefore aimed at providing you with an understanding of the current state of play concerning hybrid electric drive technology, and its potential applications, advantages, and disadvantages of this technology when applied to military land vehicles. This is a great new course developed by the Egler Institute of Technology, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. During the next two hours, I am going to start by putting the development of hybrid electric drives in context by starting with a short historical overview. You will be fascinated to learn that this technology remarkably made its first appearance during World War I. I will then move into a more detailed discussion about what constitutes a hybrid electric drive, and the key benefits of this rapidly maturing technology. The latter sections of the course will provide you with an excellent overview of the key components used in hybrid electric drives, including the various layouts and configurations. Finally, I will run over the primary advantages and challenges associated with the use of hybrid electric drive technology in the military environment. So, let's start by watching an introductory video about the Shadow Military Hybrid Electric Drive Vehicle, developed by General Dynamics Land Systems for the United States Marine Corps in 2002. The vehicle's mission was to conduct reconnaissance, surveillance and targeting, and underwent extensive testing in 2004. Today's hybrid electric vehicles combine the technologies of a fuel-burning engine with a battery-powered motor. 
This is a prototype reconnaissance surveillance and targeting vehicle for the U.S. Marine Corps. It's nicknamed the Shadow. This best of both worlds tactical machine combines the power and range of a diesel with the fuel efficiency and silent stealth of an electric vehicle. This vehicle will give the soldier significant new capabilities. It gives them uh, just an unprecedented amount of mobility. Off-road, cross-country, and broken terrain, the kinds of terrain we're seeing uh, our forces operate in today. The Shadow has a 140 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine, but there's no transmission or drive shaft to transfer that power to the wheels. Instead, the diesel turns a generator, which charges the batteries and powers four 50 kilowatt electric drive motors mounted in the wheel hubs. When conditions call for maximum torque, no problem. The batteries can kick some extra juice to the in-hub motors, giving the Shadow over 200 horses of pure climbing muscle. Check this out. Since each wheel is powered by its own motor, they can actually turn in opposite directions. If the troops get trapped on a dead end street, this sure beats the old three point turn. The military believes that better fuel economy makes for a more effective fighting force. And thanks to their super efficient technology, hybrid tactical vehicles can get the most out of a gallon of fuel. In fact, the Shadow burns almost half as much diesel as a non-hybrid Humvee. Now for covert recon and surveillance missions, keeping a low profile is critical. A noisy engine can be a dead giveaway, but the Shadow's hybrid design allows you to shut down the diesel and go into an ultra-quiet, all-electric stealth mode. It allows you to either fulfill your mission as a reconnaissance or, or really helps you to reduce the risk of your mission if you're in a strike mission kind of a posture. The Shadow has an all-electric stealth range of over 20 miles, thanks to state-of-the-art lithium-ion batteries. High-density lithium ions have more than twice the storage capacity of conventional batteries. The story of hybrid electric drive technology started way back in the late 1800s when William Patton, in 1889, secured the first patent for a gasoline electric hybrid streetcar. This clever design occurred some 20 years before the mass production of combustion vehicles began. The experimental tram car, as shown in the diagram, was developed in the same year, using a gasoline generator to charge a lead acid battery and power electric traction. Motors. Interestingly, many of the world's current diesel engine trains still largely use the same operating principle today. While this early gasoline electric hybrid vehicle was designed primarily for commercial applications, it didn't take long before the military picked up on the technology, and started thinking about ways to use such vehicles for military applications. The historically important military hybrid electric drive vehicles of World War I and II, included the same cam and tank developed by the French in 1916, the Ferdinand or Elephant heavy tank destroyer developed by the Germans in 1942, and the T-23 medium tank developed by the United States in 1942. Then over the next 60 years, various armies of the world attempted at intervals of about every 10 years to try and develop better and more effective military hybrid electric drive vehicles. While these developments were not successful, the emergence of Toyota's commercially successful hybrid electric drive vehicles has set the stage for a possible transition into military vehicles sometime in the 2020s. Designed in 1900, the first commercially produced hybrid electric vehicle was the Lorna Porsche Electromobile, designed by Mr. Ferdinand Porsche, when he worked at the Lorna Worker Company in Germany. The vehicle is also known as the Mixed. The first prototypes were two-wheel drive, battery-powered electric vehicles with two front-wheel hub-mounted motors. 
A later version of the vehicle employed a series hybrid using hub-mounted electric motors in each wheel, powered by batteries and a gasoline engine generator. The Electromobile developed either 10 or 14 horsepower, with each electric motor capable of generating between 2.5 to 3.5 horsepower, with a peak power output of 7 horsepower. The battery packs were enormous, consisting of a 44-cell, 80-volt lead-acid battery, housed in a spring-suspended battery container to protect the fragile cells. The battery weighed approximately 500 kilograms, or 35% of the vehicle's all-up weight. Despite its weight, the vehicle was very powerful and fast for the time. Later models, using a newer engine and transmission, reached speeds of 57 km per hour. The vehicle even won the prestigious 1901 Exelberg Rally, breaking Austrian speed records of the time. All up, more than 300 electromobiles was sold. For about the next century, none of the hybrid electric vehicles that followed the electromobile were commercially successful, and despite this technology, outperforming most of their combustion engine peers in terms of speed and acceleration, they simply couldn't compete due to persistent problems associated with high weight, complexity and cost. The First and Second World Wars drove a high degree of innovation and the production of hundreds of tank models. A number of hybrid electric drive tanks were developed because the instant steering response, and high degree of controllability, offered enhanced battlefield mobility. Manufactured from 1917 to 1918, the St. Cameron tank was the first military hybrid electric drive vehicle to enter operational service in World War I, with its 11 to 19 mm thick armor, 75 mm main gun, and four 8 mm machine guns, it weighed a total of 23 tons. Despite its weight, the tank could manage a very respectable top speed of 12 km per hour. It was powered by a hybrid electric drive consisting of a four-cylinder, 90 horsepower gasoline engine, coupled to an electric generator providing power to two separate electric motors, one for each track. The vehicle's power to weight ratio was 4 horsepower per ton. The St. Cameron tank was largely considered to be a failure at the time. Its principal weakness was its Holt Caterpillar tracks. They were far too short in relation to the vehicle's length and weight of 23 tons producing a high ground pressure, and thus poor mobility performance in the muddy and artillery-created battlefields. The overhanging front part of the tank also reduced longitudinal stability, and made traversing trenches or any obstacles very difficult. All up 400 St. Cameron tanks were manufactured. 